Hello everyone, welcome to NIOS studio. I, Dr. Gargi Kaur from Department of Geography, Shahid Bhagat Singh College, would like to take you through this session, which is about climate. The objectives of the session is to understand the factors influencing the climate of India, to explain the mechanism of monsoon and its various characteristics, to recognize the cyclic system of seasons along with their unique features, to describe the distribution of rainfall pattern in India, and also to analyze how our social and cultural life is deeply associated with the cycle of seasons. And last but not the least, to describe the global environmental changes and its impact on Indian climate. Now let's begin with understanding the two simple terms, climate and weather. Climate refers to the sum total of weather conditions and variations over large area for a long period of time that is about uh, more than 30 years. Weather on the other hand is a state of atmosphere over an area at any point of time. Similarly, weather conditions which last for longer duration are responsible for making a season. Now what are the factors affecting the climate of India? The first factor is location. The places which are closer to the equator have high temperature. As one moves towards the poles, towards temp uh, the poles, the temperature decreases. India is located in the northern hemisphere and Tropic of Cancer passes through it at 23 and a half degree through the central part of India. So south of this latitude we find tropical climate and towards the north we find subtropical climate. For example, Andhra Pradesh would be hotter than Haryana. Another factor is the distance from the sea. The southern half of India is surrounded by sea from three sides the Arabian Sea in the west, the Bay of Bengal in the east and the Indian Ocean in the south. Due to moderating influence of the sea, the southern region which is nearer to the sea is neither too hot in summer nor very cold in winter. Whereas area north of India which is far away from the sea has extreme type of climate. Another factor is altitude. It means the height above the average sea level. The atmosphere becomes less dense as we go higher from the earth's surface and thus the temperature also decreases with the height. For example, cities located on the hills such as uh, Shimla uh, will be cooler than cities on the plains such as Ludhiana, which has hot climate. Now look at this map which is showing how temperature decreases with increasing altitude. Another factor which influences the temperature uh, climate is mountain ranges. Mountain range also affect the climate of any region to a great extent. The Himalaya mountain is located in the northern part of our country with an average height of 6000 meter. It protects our country from cold winds of Central Asia. On the other hand, the Czech crane bearing southwest monsoon winds compel them to shed their moisture in India. Similarly, Western Ghats force rain-bearing winds to cause heavy rainfall on the western slopes of the Western Ghat. Himalayas protect India from cold wave of Central Asia. Look at this picture, this map that also shows the same. Direction of surface wind, another factor influencing the climate. The wind system also affects the Indian climate system. This system consists of monsoon winds, land and sea breeze and local winds. In winter, the winds blow from the land to the sea, so they are cold and dry. On the other hand, in summer, wind blow from sea to land, bringing the moisture along with them from the sea and they cause widespread rain in most part of the country. Upper air currents also influences the climate system of India. Besides the surface winds, there are strong air currents called jet streams which also influences the climate of India. These jet streams are a narrow belt of fast blowing winds located generally at 12,000 meter height above the sea level. These cyclonic winds originate near the Mediterranean Sea and move eastward. On their way, they collect moisture from the Persian Gulf and shed it in the northwestern part of India during winter season. These jet streams shift northward during summer season and blow in Central Asia. This helps in the onset of monsoon. Do you know air has weight and this weight exert pressure on us which is known as air pressure. There is an inverse relationship between temperature and air pressure. That is if the temperature of an area is high then the air pressure will be low and vice versa. 
Difference in the air pressure is responsible for the traction of the wind. Now what is the mechanism of monsoon? Let's understand that. But before that, let's understand what is what does the term monsoon stands for? It is a term derived from Arabic word mosum which means season. It refers to the seasonal reversal in the wind direction during a year. During summer, the interior part of North Indian plains covering Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana and western Uttar Pradesh are intensively hot. The daily maximum temperature in some of these parts are as high as 45 degree centigrade to 47 degree centigrade. The average maximum temperature is above 33 degree centigrade in the month of May at Delhi and Jodhpur. Such high temperature heats up the air of that region. Hot air rises, low pressure air is created under it and this low pressure is also known as monsoonal trough. It lies between Jaisalmer in the west and Balasore in Odessa in the east. Look at this temperature map of the month of May. It shows the low pressure region in the northern part of India. On the other hand, temperature over Indian Ocean is relatively low as water needs more time to get heated as compared to land. So a relatively high pressure region is created over the sea. Thus there is a difference of temperature and resultant pressure over North Central Indian Plains and Indian Ocean. Due to this difference, air from high pressure region of the sea starts moving towards the low pressure region of North India. Thus, by mid-June, the general movement of air is from equatorial region of Indian Ocean to the Indian subcontinent and the direction of these winds in general is from southwest to northeast. This direction is exactly opposite to that of the trade winds, which is from northeast to southwest, prevailing during winter in India. This complete reversal of wind direction from northeast to southwest and vice versa is known as monsoons. These winds originate over warm seas, therefore they contain a lot of moisture. When these moisture laden winds move over the Indian subcontinent, they cause widespread rain throughout India from June to September. 80 to 90 percent of the total rainfall in India is confined to these four months only. This map shows the advancing monsoon and temperature of June. Now what are the characteristics of monsoon? Monsoons are not steady winds. They are irregular in nature, affected by different atmospheric conditions. Thus, sometimes monsoons arrive early or sometimes late. Monsoons are not equally distributed. Coastal areas like Kerala, West Bengal and Odisha receive heavy rainfall, whereas interior regions like Haryana, Madhya Pradesh receive less rainfall. When monsoon arrives, it gives heavy rainfall which continues for several days. This is known as burst of monsoon. This occurs mainly at Kerala coast where it reaches first. Now let's understand the cycle of seasons. India enjoys variety of seasons due to geographical location. We have four seasons. Cold weather season which lasts from December to February. Hot weather season which lasts from March to May. Then advancing southwest monsoon season from June to September. And post or retreating monsoon season from October to November. Now what is cold weather season like? The duration of the cold weather season is from December to February. The temperature decreases from the south to the north. December and January are the coldest month and the average temperature in north is 12 degree centigrade to 15 degree centigrade and in south it is about 25 degree centigrade. Frost is common in north and northwest India. This map of January shows the temperature pattern. Wind direction map of January shows the wind direction in the month of January, the pattern of wind direction. During the winter season, northeast trade winds prevail of India, pre prevail over India. They blow from land to sea, hence for most part of the country it is dry season. However, the Tamil Nadu coast receives winter rainfall due to these winds a part of northeast trade winds blow over Bay of Bengal. They gather moisture which causes rainfall in the coastal Tamil Nadu while the rest of the country remains dry. In the northern part of the country, the weather is marked by clear sky, low temperatures and low humidity. The winter rainfall is very important 
for the cultivation of rabi crops. Now, what is the hot weather season like in India? By the end of February, the temperature starts rising. So from March to May, it is hot weather season. We find high temperature in plains, western part of India and in the central part of peninsular India. However, over Indian Ocean, south of the equator, high pressure belt begins to develop in this season. In northwest India, afternoon dust storms are common. During summer, very hot and dry winds blow over North Indian plains, which we locally called as loo. Exposure to loo may cause heat or sunstroke. This is also the season for localized thunderstorm associated with violent winds. Torrential downpours often accompanied by hail. In West Bengal, these storms are known as Kal Boishaki, calamity for the month of Baisakhi. Towards the close of the summer season, pre-monsoon showers are common, especially in Kerala and Karnataka. They help in the early ripening of the mangoes and are often re referred to as mango showers. This picture shows the condition of the summer season. Advancing southwest monsoon season. After the scorching heat of summer season, people eagerly wait for the rains which can give them relief. Farmers wait for the rains so that they can prepare their fields for the next cropping season, Kharif. June to September are the months of advancing southwest monsoon season. By the end of May, the monsoon trough further intensifies over North India due to high temperature in the region. This map shows the advancing monsoon in India. The general direction of the wind during this season is from southwest to northeast. These winds are strong and blow at an average velocity of 30 km per hour. These moisture-laden winds first hit at Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the last week of May and Kerala coast in the first week of June with violent thunder and lightning. The southwest monsoon that flows in to India brings about a major change in its weather. There are two branches of southwest monsoon. First, the Arabian Sea branch. This branch is obstructed by Western Ghats, gives heavy rainfall on the western side of the Western Ghat. It reaches Mumbai by 10th of June. When this branch crosses the Western Ghats and reaches the Deccan Plateau and parts of Madhya Pradesh, it gives less rainfall as it is a rain shadow region. Further, this branch reaches in northern plain by 28th of June. Bay of Bengal is another branch, Bay of Bengal branch, that moves from the Bay of Bengal, strike Andaman and Nicobar Islands, northeastern states and coastal areas of West Bengal and covers the whole India of, by the 15th of July. They causes heavy rainfall in the region. However, quantity of rainfall decreases as they move towards west over the northern plains. For example, rainfall at Kolkata is 120 cm, Allahabad 91 cm and Delhi 56 cm. The monsoon tends to have breaks in its rainfall which causes wet and dry spells. This means that monsoon, occur, monsoon rains occur only a few days at a time. Rainless dry spells occur in between. As the monsoon comes after the hot and dry summer season, the rainfall brings down the temperature. This is also the time when many parts of India face floods. This is mainly because of heavy rainfall and our inability to manage our water resources more systematically. On the other hand, there are many areas that experience drought conditions during this season. Now, how does the retreating or post-monsoon season look like? This is the month between October and November. These are the month of post or retreating monsoon season. The temperatures during the September and October starts decreasing in North India. Monsoonal trough also becomes weak over Northwest India. This is gradually replaced by high pressure system. The Southwest monsoon winds weaken and start withdrawing gradually from North Indian plains by November. In October, the weather remains humid and warm due to continuing high temperature and moist land in the month of October. In Northern plains, hot and humid weather becomes oppressive at this time. It is commonly called October heat. However, Towards the end of October, temperature starts decreasing, making nights pleasant. This is also the time of cyclonic storms, which develop in the Bay of Bengal as the low pressure of North India shifts to this area. This storm, these storms create havoc in coastal areas of Odessa, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, especially in the deltas of Mahanadi, Godavari and Krishna rivers. 
Now let's look at this map showing the retreating monsoon pattern. Now how does the rainfall is distributed, how is the rain, rainfall distributed in India? It is highly uneven over a period of time in a year. As we move from east to west in the northern plains we observe that in central India rainfall decreases. In peninsular regions India's rainfall decreases from coast to the interior parts. In northeast India the rainfall increases with altitude and India is a unique example of rainfall distribution with marked contrast. This is an annual rainfall pattern of India. Both one of the rainiest and the driest places of the world are located in India itself. Areas of heavy rainfall more than 200 cm are in the western coast, sub Himalayan region of northeast and Garo, Khasi and Jaintia hills of the Meghalaya. Areas receiving 100 to 200 cm rainfall in India include some parts of the western Ghats, West Bengal, Odessa, Bihar and many states. Areas of low rainfall 60 to 100 cm includes parts of Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, interior Deccan Plateau. Areas of inadequate rainfall less than 60 cm includes western part of Rajasthan and Gujarat. Ladakh and south central part receives a rainfall of less than 20 cm. Now what is the influence of season on our socio-cultural life? Season affects our India's social and cultural life. As India is an agricultural economy, the main economic activity of agriculture is totally dependent on the cycle of seasons. Kharif crops are sown in advancing monsoon season and harvested in the post monsoon season. Ravi crop is grown in winter and Zayat crop are grown at the end of winter season. All our activities are related with the seasons. As winter seasons comes the days become shorter and we start purchasing woolen clothes, ground nuts, almonds and calorie rich food become very important in our diet. In spite of the cold weather, people celebrate many festivals like Makar Sankranti in many states, Lori in Punjab and Pongal in Tamil Nadu in the month of January. Basant Panchami is also celebrated in the month of February in which people pray for good harvest also. Summer season is very dry but it reminds us of juicy fruits, ice creams and variety of drinks. Holi and Baisakhi are the main festivals of this season. By the end of summer, Farmer starts preparing their fields so that they can welcome the rains. This is the time when people of Kerala celebrate Onam which coincide with their harvest season. Post monsoon is the harvesting time. It is also called the festival time of Dashera, Durga Puja and Diwali which are celebrated all over India. Now what are the global environmental challenge and how it's impacting India's climate? India is fortunate to have four clear seasons, summer, winter, spring and monsoon. However, these days one can notice disturbance at the cycle of seasons. This is due to global warming. It has significant political, social and economic impact that may affect almost every aspect of our lives and lifestyles. The global warming has a serious impact on world's climate. During the last decade of urbanization, industrialization and population growth, the atmosphere has been polluted. Human activities increase the amount of carbon dioxide, chlorofluorocarbon and other dangerous gases. About 51% of the solar energy is absorbed by the earth's surface which increases its temperature. The rest of the heat is reflected back into the atmosphere. These pictures show greenhouse gases and global warming, impact of global warming, particularly in Antarctica. This helped in maintaining temperature but now due to pollution some of the reflected heat is trapped by greenhouse gases mainly carbon dioxide. It has increased the temperature of the earth's surface. There is evidence to show that CO2 levels are still increasing. Many countries have signed a convention to reduce greenhouse gases under the UN framework. However, the current international agreements are still not effective enough to prevent the significant changes in climate. We already know that 70% of Indians are working in agricultural sector. Any change in temperature will have an adverse effect on agriculture. This will have a serious social and economic impact on India. Our food, our festival and our economy, everything is closely linked with the cycle of seasons. If the seasons are favorable, human lives will be good and comfortable. 
since the state of the weather affects agriculture, health, transportation, etc., it is important that all of us make some change in our lifestyle to reduce CFC and other harmful gases. Now let's do a quick recap. Climate of India is affected by many factors like location, distance from the sea, altitude, mountain ranges, direction of surface winds and upper air currents. India has a special system of reversal of winds which is known as monsoon and it comes with a system. India also has a cyclic system of season and it has four main seasons. They are winter, summer, advancing monsoon and retreating monsoon. Seasons play an important role in our day-to-day -day life and affect our activities and eating habits. Global warming also influences Indian climate. Thank you learners for listening patiently. Hope the session was fruitful. Good luck.